for the last one year, uh, the uh, our lives have changed the last one year. Yeah, talking about lockdown, yeah, COVID, and all of this. Yes, yes, sir. What do you make of all those events? Hmm. And what are the expectations of this? Okay, so I, I look at this spiritual dimension. I look at the wickedness of man, man humanity to man. Um, people will say conspiracy theory, but the conspiracy theory we talk about most of the time, those guys behind it, the deep state, the globalists, the, they are not hiding it. They said it, they are on video. The last time I watched a video where they were saying Africans are too much, they have to kill some of them. Uh, a lot of people watched it. That was not a conspiracy theory. It's easy to like that's and you can see the plan. You had when the guy said, I don't want to call his name on this interview now. He said they expected so many people to die in Africa. So you know that COVID-19 is is a biological weapon. It's a biological weapon to eradicate as many people. They want to start from the old people and then concentrate on Africans, but Look at how God has helped us. Up to now, they are still thinking that we will die. Up to now, they have increased the, the anger and the rage of the COVID-19. Still, God is still keeping us in Africa. So, I see man in humanity to man. I see some people trying to play God in the life of humans. But God will always show them that it's, it's, it's more than human beings. It is God. Nothing takes God by surprise. Two, I see that even in all of this, God allows it. God allows some of these things to happen because all of them are still in his plan. Since nothing takes him by surprise, they are still in his plan. At the right time, he will pull out the joker. He will always pull out the joker. They can never win. He will always pull out the joker. And then in all of this, there are lessons to learn. For instance, sir, in this lockdown, I can tell you at our head here, the things we couldn't achieve when we were roaming about, <laughs> we achieved it when, when we couldn't move as a church, when we were just broadcasting and then few people together, we do, we do visual. We accomplish much more than what we, we would have accomplished when we were roaming about. So God is saying something. Be still and know that I am God. There are a lot of us we are, we are distracted. We are chasing shadows. That if we just calm down and wait on Him, there are so many things He wants to show us that we do not know. So I discovered that some of us are running. We are running just with one leg concerning our destiny. And we think because we have activities in that area, oh, that's what we should be doing. So the lockdown open our eyes to see some other aspect of God's grace in our lives that we never attended to. City people, for instance. Uh, city people have always been online now, but the attention was given to um, the, 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 the hard copies, more, the prints, more than the... But, so look at what you're accomplishing online. And it's going pari pasu, online. So there are so many things I have discovered in my life. For instance, I was telling you that in the lockdown, I was able to start an academy online. There's no way I could have even imagined myself sitting down. It took me three months to sit down to, to get the modules. Eh? You get about 21 lectures, put them online. I couldn't have had that time to do that. I'm busy. I'm a very busy person. I'm preaching for my college one, the pastor or the other moving around encouraging people. So there was no way I could have done that. But lockdown enabled me to sit down and look inwards and, and, and document revelations and put it out there so that I'm still here, I am gone, people are still being blessed by it. So for me, the lockdown is not... The enemy meant it for evil, but God turned it around for good. For those who know how to put their trust in God. For me, that's how I see all of this. And it will still help it will it's still end in, in, in testimony. The enemy may think it's winning, but it's still going to end in testimony. Mm. Let's, let's talk about the ministry. The ministry, uh, okay. How many years of the ministry? How has it been? 
sir? I think how many years have you spent? Oh, okay. So how's it been? So I was called into ministry in 1998, and then we actually started ministry um, 2000. So the ministry is 21 years old now. <laughs> wow! Even at that, he's just sit, he's just sitting with me now. 21 years. That's not small, no. <laughs> but it's been wonderful, sir. It's been wonderful. I've seen the faithfulness of God all through. I remember um, when when I first received the call and we started at a place called Gideyani. I had an angelic visitation. The angel of God came to me physically. I didn't know it was an angel. The only thing I knew was that I had goosebumps all over me. He was asking me questions. And as he was asking me the question, I was feeling like, ah. Somebody will ask you, which language do you want me to talk? Which, which language do you want for this uh, discussion? So, uh, I said English. It's okay. And then he started with Yoruba. He asked that question. And he changed to Queen's English. And this was a man that was dressed uh, Saturday or Sunday. What he was putting on was even from the pants he was putting on. Ankara was even, the, the Ankara Buba was even from the pants he was putting on. And then we discussed and he told me everything that will happen in my ministry. And I've seen every one after the other happened. I remember when he was about going, when he asked me, before he went, he said, um, I'm, 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 I'm hungry. Um, can I have anything to eat? Oh, I said, we don't have food, but can I give you money? He said, no problem. Collected the money. Then he said, I, I was hungry. We fed him. Okay? He said some things. And they said, oh, I'm, I'm thirsty. Can I get water to drink? I said, water? Okay, quickly. I'm coming. I got in water. So I was thirsty. We fed him. He was bringing out those things. Then he said, would you ask who I am? I said, who are you? Then he said, in the presence of God, there's fullness of joy at the right hand, our pleasures forever. In other words, oh, you're an elder that is seated in the presence of God. Oh, from that moment, I started having goosebumps. Then, when it was true, he gave me instruction do this program, do this program, do this program. That's how our seven night VG started. He said, do this program, seven nights. If you can't do it alone, let other people. And God will remove it. This will be happening. He gave me some instruction. He gave me some information that eventually came to pass. When he was about to go, and he left through the gate, somebody else was coming in, and immediately I asked the person, did you see the man that was dressed in different attire? Did you see? He said, did you see anybody? Are you sure? So I said, go out, go and check. Whether, he said, I didn't see anybody, sir. So it, I confirmed that this is actually an angel. Sir, from that encounter, I've been very, very watchful about what the angel of God said. One of the things he said, he said, God will always come to test you when it's time for you to go to your next level. But be careful. The people you put as your oddly, as your secretary, as your bouncers, because some of them don't allow us to come to test you. That hit me. He said, because when it's time to test you, we will come again. We'll come again. He said, but be careful. You should put. That's why, sir, I'm a very, very careful person, but I'm very, very accessible. And the reason I'm accessible is because of that information. I know people take undue advantage of access, but I had that information, so I'm very, very careful of that. Because we don't know when the test will come again, and I don't want to fail. So ministry for me has been Beautiful dramas, beautiful dramas, up and down. Sometimes up, other times down. Sometimes up, other times down. Encouragement. The Lord will bring this encouragement. Men will bring things that will make you to ask yourself. That was the time I thought I was going to leave ministry. Uh, because of treachery, betrayal, the people you sweat for, the people you fast and pray on their behalf, and they get a breakthrough. Oh, they could even get a breakthrough and go, no problem. But then the next you start hearing, they start saying terrible things about you, and you're wondering, how did we get here? So one day, I think it was my friend I went to tell, I said, I'm going to just, I'm a chartered banker for Canada, I'm going to pick my certificate. I mean, sir, if I'm working now, I should be a group managing director of a bank. I said, I'm going to dust and get my certificate and go home. He said, I'm so <laughs> Then he told me, there was a time too. I wanted to leave with this. You know, don't let us, let us hang in there. Human beings, the best of man, is man at his best. So we, that's why, one of the reasons why 
me and my covenant brother are very close is because we are vulnerable in each other's hands. We encourage each other. We encourage, we don't wait for people to encourage us. We don't look for people to encourage us. We encourage one another. That times when I feel like, oh, I need, and I'll call him, he will just come to my house just to encourage me. I remember there was a time I was outside the country and he was going through. He knew I was outside the country. We planned it together. He knew I was outside the country. But he came, drove in here just to come and sit on my chair. That while I'm sitting here, I think I'll get some encouragement. While he's seated, he was hearing some voices in my banquet hall. He moved there. Then he met some, some of my pastors in charge of plane. And he started talking to them. How he was feeling. And they were looking at him. He just wanted somebody to talk to. I want to say that in ministry, God blessed me with friends. You see, because ministry is not something you can do. You can't run the race alone. And then if you have a wrong friend, you're going to have issues too. You must have friends that can tell you the truth, the gospel truth. You're missing it, they can tell you. Oh, do check me. Whoa. Those who can bring you to other. So, as it were, if, if, I'm, if I'm missing it, just call a person. He will put me back. If he's missing it, call me. I know how to. <laughs> I know how to say one or two things and say, okay, 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 I get here. So, well, in ministry, you, sir. Thank you. Wow. Of course. Oh, oh, very interesting. I remember. Um, when we started ministry 2000, so 10 years, 12 years down the line, I was not interested in relating with anybody because I had my hands burnt. My greatest disappointment is in ministry in the hands of pastors, not even in the hands of members, in the hands of pastors. So I was very, very careful. I didn't want to have anything to do with any pastor. Oh, can you imagine now? I am a convener. Of plane and I have close to three to four hundred geos under me. But before that, I could not want to have anything to do with us. But I had God. God said, "Now it's time to network." So I called one of my junior pastors. I said, ha. "God is telling me how to network. I don't know anybody to network with. Do you know anybody who operates like me?" Ha. He said, "He knows." I said, "You should say he knows." He said, "When you see him, you will see that both of you." You are identical, you operate the same. I said, really? Is there anybody that operates like me? So he was able to get the appointment. And I, I mean, more than almost almost 18 years ago now. And then we had that meeting. As soon as he saw me, he said, I've, I've, I've seen you before. I said, where? He laughed. He said, I've seen you before, sir. I said, okay, this is why I came. The Lord said, I should network. I'm a very careful person. This is who I am. Because a reporter's speech is a distorted speech. Before you hear from somebody else, I got born again here. From there, I went here. I walked here. This is why I left this place. This is why I left this place. I'm here now. And the Lord says, I have to network. And the reason I'm networking with you is because I want to make it. If you are not ready to help me make it, we don't even start this relationship at all. And he laughed. He said, Dito, me too, I want to make heaven know. And that was how that relationship has been ever since. And God has helped us to keep that relationship going. Regardless of all the uh, people, uh, people try. We, we, we just look at them and laugh. <laughs> we just look at them, we see people try to, we just laugh. Because we know that we are not pretending about what our relationship is all about. We celebrate each other. It's my senior, by age, by ministry, by achievement. But my friend will tell you, this guy carries grace. And I celebrate the grace of God in his life. So we, we, we are not competing. We compliment. And we don't pretend. And we defend ourselves. One thing I've discovered about the body of Christ is that people are paying lip service to relationship. They don't understand what relationship is all about. He's my friend with his with his positives and his negatives. I'm his friend with my positives and negatives. That's what friendship is all about. I'm not perfect. He's not perfect. But I will defend him. 24-7, I will defend him. And he doesn't stop me from saying, sir, I just can't shake anybody. I can't shake anybody. That's friendship. But... That is what is lacking in the body of Christ. And I think that's what our relationship is teaching people. 
that we can have covenant relationship that are sincere, that are genuine, that are heavenly bound, and there's value adding to one another. Uh, our relationship is not based on money. We don't we don't even relate with money. We don't operate about money at all. At all, at all. It's very funny, but that's the truth. A person will not preach here and collect money. And I don't go to preach there and say I need money. I don't know if you're getting my point. Oh, he goes out of his way. Oh, man of God. The Lord said, I should send this money to you. The Lord said, but our relationship is not based on money. Our relationship is based on true brothers growing together and making heaven together. So what are, what's the message you generally wish to you? Um, I mean, you know, I mean, I spent some money with God from the beginning. It's time for what's the message to you at the time of it? Okay, so I, I, I think I'm just going to try and put the message in about um, bullet points five. Number one, know why you are here. No man is on earth by mistake. Everyone is here for a purpose. You must know why you're here. And in case you don't know why you're here, look inwards to the giftings and the grace of God in your life. They are a pointer to what you are called to do on earth. No man can be fulfilled outside what they are called to do. Can never be fulfilled. It will amount to running another person's race. So that's why I tell people there's a difference between qualification and qualification. You can have qualification and not be fulfilled. But if you discover your calling in God, which is your gifting, your grace, your skill, your talent, you will always be fulfilled. That's why AY, for instance, who studies something else, but is a comedian, is more fulfilled being a comedian than probably what he studied. You know, I don't know whether he studied art or whatever. Most of them discover their calling, the gifts of God in their life. They pursue it. And they make more money from that than the Bali that their fathers told them to go and study. So the first thing I want to tell people, locate your purpose, discover your purpose, then pursue it. Pursue it. The second thing I want to tell them, time waits for no man. The earlier you start, the better. Because time is running out. There are some people God has wired you to reach out to concerning your purpose. If you don't reach out to them, you must have been a failure in their lives. They're very important. Number three, don't be in a hurry to marry a wife. Make sure the wife that you marry is the wife that is wired to support your assignment. If there's anything I'm grateful for after my salvation, I'm grateful for my wife. God gave me a wife that has helped me to be who I am today. So getting it right in the aspect of marriage is key. And then when you get married, marriage is a going concern. You keep growing into one another. Don't grow her part. Grow a part. Be a part. Two of you be a part. Grow into one another. Regardless of your shortcomings, grow into one another. So, and I also would like to tell people, everybody has his own time and his own season. Wait for your time. Wait for your season. While you are waiting for your time and season, celebrate others. Rejoice that your season will come. If you don't know how to do that, every time you have a, you have a bad belly against somebody's season that has come, what you are saying is that God is not just to allow their season to come. So you, by extension, disqualify yourself from your own season. It's very, very important. Number what? Now maybe number five. <laughs> Run away from sin. Oh, what Billy? Ah, I'm a fine man. Women always come to me. But I think I have a covenant with God. I told God early in life that if you will help me and deliver me from the battle of women, I will forever be grateful. Oh, what Billy? Oh, what Billy? Oh, what Billy? Because I don't want no way to take to profit. You cannot. You cannot. So, for those of us who are wise, keep one woman. Take care of that woman. Mana pie, mana ogi, mana pa, mana bread, mana. You can eat your mana whichever way you want. What you see in another woman, another man is seeing it in your wife. It's only you stop looking. Why? Because <laughs> one of the ways to be destroyed in life 
his two strange women. So I planned all of this. And uh, I can continue to talk, sir. <laughs> In my 60 years, I've learned then, take good care of your health. Nobody's going to do that for you. Be committed to your health. Intentionally, take good care of your health. Why are wealthy people dying as a result of COVID, sir? Lack of exercise. Lack of exercise. Exercise sometimes even help our immune system. It boosts our immune system. If you see a wealthy man dying as a result of COVID, it's because they go from AC car, AC room, AC kitchen, AC office, AC everything. They have gym, they don't gym. They have a treadmill, they don't tread the meal. Most of the time, that's what happens. But you see all these guys that walk in the sun, no COVID-19 can kill them. Their body is too hot for COVID-19. So we must intentionally take care of our health. Nobody can do that for us. Only you can do that for yourself. Only you can do that. So I, I encourage people, do some level of simple uh, 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 warm-up exercises to keep your body, you know, flowing, uh, I mean, the blood, you know, flowing and it's very, very important.